I listened to it on audiobook and having to listen to that through my ear holes was an interesting experience. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with part two of my wrap up for June 2024. I read a total of 15 books so these are the last eight that I read. If you're interested in the first seven that I read you guys can check out that video on my channel as well. But without further ado let us get started. The first book that I have is Last Girl Lied To by Lori Elizabeth Flynn and I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Fiona who lost her best friend Trixie to suicide but Fiona refuses to accept that explanation. She is determined to find out what actually happened to Trixie and so she teams up with Jasper who was Trixie's friends with the benefits. As she uncovers more secrets that Trixie was hiding she starts to realize that she may not have known her friend at all and it's kind of the story of that. This was an okay read. I liked how we were told the story through present day along with flashbacks when Trixie was alive. I do think that the pacing was rather slow and it definitely started to drag in the middle. I don't think that I would classify it as a thriller. Although the pacing is rather slow, I did fly through this book as the chapters are very short. All of the characters in the story are quite unlikable and all of them are very flawed. Fiona was also a very unreliable narrator but I did enjoy that aspect of the story. I also think that the ending was really well done and I did like how it concluded so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Haunting Adeline by H.G. Carlton Liston. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars and I'm kind of thinking that I want to bump it up to a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I am aware that this is a very unhinged story but like it was so entertaining. This follows Adeline who has inherited Parson Manor from her late grandmother. It is believed to be haunted and her mother really wants her to move out. When Adeline realizes that she has a stalker she is terrified but she's also a little bit intrigued by the man who she sees standing outside her window every night. Like I said, I am very much aware that this man is unhinged and a terrible love interest, but I have to admit, I was entertained as fuck by my disbelief. This is definitely a dark romance and it features some very disturbing scenes. I listened to it on audiobook and having to listen to that through my ear holes was an interesting experience. But Teddy Hamilton was such an amazing Zaid. I liked how it had the side plot of Gigi's stalker who is Adeline's great-grandmother. I really liked how that played out. It kind of gave the relief from the darker topics that were in Adeline's timeline. I do think that this definitely could have been shorter. It's like a 500 and something page book but like I said I cannot say that I was not entertained so I gave it a 4 maybe a 4.5. I haven't fully decided on my rating but it was a time, I'll tell you that. Next up I have Blood and Fury by Tessa Grayton and Justina Ireland. This is the second book and the conclusion of the Chaos and Flame duology and I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. This book picks up a few months after the first book concludes and I do think that it was a good ending to this duology. I did really like the blood magic concept in this but I do wish that we had more of a backstory about how it worked and why it existed. I thought the idea of the Imperials was so interesting and I really liked how they seemed to inhabit the same body as the characters. Darling, the female main character in this, got on my nerves. She was just very whiny in this installment which I didn't find her to be as whiny in the first one. It was also a bit of a disappointment that Talon and Darling were separated for the majority of the beginning of this book because I really like them together but my biggest disappointment for this conclusion was that there was just not enough Caspian. He was my favorite in the first book, definitely a highlight, and we just barely saw him in this which made me very sad because I thought we were going to get 
a lot more of him. But I digress. It was a 4 out of 5 star read for me. I do think it was a good conclusion and I do recommend the duology as a whole. Next up I have If You Can't Take the Heat by Michael Ruhlman and I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Theo who is a high school football player but he has a devastating injury which causes him to have to take a step back from football and so he discovers his love for cooking. He gets the opportunity to begin working at a very fancy French restaurant. He quickly rises through the ranks and becomes closer with the chef and a waitress named Julia. I thought I was going to like this a lot more than I did. I found myself bored for the majority of this story. I do think that there was good character development in Theo and if there was a character that I had to care about it would be him. But in all honesty I just didn't care for any of these characters so when the danger arose I didn't really feel the stakes. I'm personally not a big fan of the cheating trope which I didn't know was a big aspect of this book going into it so that's a me thing. If you don't mind that you might really enjoy this. I was not a fan of Julia in the slightest. I understand that the reader is supposed to empathize with her situation but I could not care less about her. I just think she was a shitty individual overall. I could not get behind the romance. I just wanted to take sweet little Theo away from her and keep them far far apart. I just did not vibe with this book. I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next two books are companion novels. The first one is The Forgetting, the second is The Knowing, and these are both by Sharon Cameron. I gave the first one a 3.5 and the second one a 3 out of 5 stars. The Forgetting follows Nadia, who is the only person who remembers everything after every 12 years the people of canon forget everything they've ever known, including their own name and everybody they've met. In order to remember anything, they write down things in a book that they keep on their person for their entire lives. People are told to only write down the truth, but sometimes they decide to change their narrative, and it's kind of the story of that. I thought the concept of the forgetting was very intriguing, but at times it could get a little bit confusing. It did start off very slow, and I was not convinced that I was going to even enjoy this story, but I will say that it did get better as the story progressed. I did really like Nadia. I think that her ability to remember things was very interesting. It kind of gave her an edge over all the other characters, and I did think it was interesting that she kept her secrets and everything very close to her chest. I wasn't the biggest fan of Grey, the love interest. I just didn't really like all of his blackmailing. He did end up growing on me in the end, but I can't say that I fully trusted him at all. I did really like the complicated relationships in this, especially between Nadia and her sisters. I do think that this one is worth reading. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And that leads me to the second book, The Knowing, which is the companion novel. This takes place years after this first book concludes. I definitely didn't enjoy it as much as the first book, but it was definitely a very good companion novel. You don't necessarily have to have read The Forgetting in order to read The Knowing, but I do think it definitely enhances the story if you have read the first book. Samara is one of The Knowing, which means that she actually does remember things from her past, and I do think that she was a very interesting character. I do really like how the author wove the forgetting into the knowing, but I will admit I was a little bit confused at times. I also think that the pacing was extremely slow in this, so it did drag quite a bit for me, so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up I have With a Little Luck by Marissa Meyer. I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It is the second book in the Fortuna Beach series, and this follows Prude, who is the main character in the first book, Instant Karma. It follows her twin brother Jude. And it basically follows Jude after he finds a 20-sided dice in his family's record shop, and he suddenly finds that he is the luckiest he has ever been. I enjoyed this for the most part, but for some reason I just didn't fall in love with it. I listened to it on audiobook and I definitely think that that enhanced the story a lot for me. I don't know if I would have rated it as high as I did if I hadn't listened to it. This is told exclusively from Jude's point of view, who I did like, but he did drive me a little bit crazy with his fawning over Maya. 
I just wanted to shake him and yell at him and get him to realize that he had absolutely no chemistry with Maya whatsoever, in my opinion. I personally was very much Team Ari. I wish that we had gotten a point of view from her as well, because I do think that that would have really enhanced the story for us. I did really like the comics that Jude drew throughout. Him and his friends play D&D, &D and he likes to draw comics of their adventure, which I thought was a really fun addition to the story. But I wish that we had gotten a lot more of these. I think it's only sprinkled throughout the book three or four times. I just think personally that it would have been a lot of fun to see more of that. I think it's funny because I wasn't the biggest fan of Prude in Instant Karma, but I loved seeing her in this installment, and I don't really know why, but that's a fun little tidbit. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was fun but it wasn't anything spectacular. And then the final book that I read for the month of June 2024 is The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland, and I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. After the death of her sister Savannah, Zara Jones has moved in with her abusive uncle. She is hell-bent on bringing her sister back from the dead. She ends up crossing paths with Jude Wolf, who is the daughter of a billionaire who accidentally cursed herself after dabbling in the dark arts and the oculate. The two seek the help from Emmer, who is a witch who has a strange connection with the serial killer who killed Zara's sister. Now they must work together in order to identify the serial killer and stop him before he strikes again. We love female rage in this household, so make them witches and sapphic witches at that, and I am in. This was a very interesting story with a cast of characters that you could not help but root for in the end. The story definitely starts off slow when we learn more about Zara and Jude, but once Emma is introduced, it definitely picks up pace. I really enjoyed how each girl had their own motives for what they were doing, but they all ended up being intertwined by the end of the story. Jude was definitely my favorite of the three. I just thought she was so sarcastic and flirty and I loved everything about her. I definitely think that she was very loyal to those she cared about and I loved that attribute in her. There is quite a bit of body horror in this, so if that's not your thing, maybe avoid it, but that personally doesn't bother me and I actually really liked it. I really loved the ending in this. I think it wrapped up very nicely. I'm very sad that I'm not getting more of these characters. I really hope that there's going to be a second installment, but I don't think there is. But I would very much like to see more of these characters because they're just so much fun. So I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. Definitely recommend this one. It's definitely a very good, like, autumn Halloween read. So put it on your radar. All right, everybody. So those were the last eight books that I read in the month of June 2024. If you are interested in seeing the first seven, like I said, that video is up on my channel. So check it out if you're interested. And let me know down below if you have read any of these videos. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye.